You, you, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's this, this, this is nothing you can know what's up in the hood. Today, we know that we can no longer let our kids eat whatever they want, because now we know better. We're issuing new school wellness guidelines to help build healthier learning environments for our kids. School lunch is very repetitive, and it's very inhumane for our students to eat. Sometimes it's good, most times it's not. You got the rare occasion where it's, it's, it's decent. The school lunch is not very satisfying. I feel like it's not very nutritious because I feel like people are still hungry and it's not very fulfilling. Because mainly like we had pizza almost every day and like that's okay if that can get tired after a while because like of me personally, I'm forced to eat it because I play sports. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's nasty. It's okay. I mean it ain't the best. It's obviously school lunch so it's not like they're going to provide something that's really going to contribute to our health. So I mean yeah. They get me through the day. The school lunch is kind of terrible, not healthy, and it's not, not good for kids right now in this generation. Um, I feel like it's not healthy because um, it's pizza, and then like that's not really good to just have pizza all the time. I feel like it's other things that we need. We need something else that will fill us up. Yes, pizza is good and we got fruit and vegetables, but I feel like as if like we need something else with it. Salads and carrots and stuff. That's the only healthy thing about it. To a certain extent, yeah, they do serve vegetables, but other than that, we do get the same meal every day. So sure no, because like the food don't be cooked all the way. Just to pick your facts, like, like the chicken sandwiches, they be a little pink. I don't know if that's supposed to be right, but it'd be like that sometimes. Students would love to eat something that is appealing to their eyesight and it's appealing to their taste buds, appealing to their smell, appealing to, so they don't throw up. I think it's nasty because it don't look appealing to me. If they gave us stuff that, that looks appealing, like if they actually took the time to make the food, then maybe we'll take the time to put it in our stomach. I believe that they have it pre-made and they just heat it up somehow. And once they heat it up, they serve it to us. I think they just set it out on one tray and just like, once lunch time come, they probably warm it up or heat it up. It's not prepared fresh, i just say that. Pizza or better nachos. We need more nachos and they, they need to put more meat on nachos, you know, you know. They need to actually cook their food for real. So like the burgers, if they was cooked and actually had some stuff, yeah. I prefer like, if it was like hot chili instead of like cold sandwiches all the time or something like that. Just something that's hot and fresh. Tacos, I love some tacos. I prefer to eat something that's uh, easy to eat, like finger foods, like uh, nachos, chicken, fried chicken would be good. Uh, just more fried foods, basically. Mashed potatoes, you know, it's a lot. We need some vitamin C, more drink options, because I'm lactose intolerant. So, like, have options as water or juice. I feel like there should be more options, because it's very repetitive. We eat pizza almost every day. Vegetables that is in the green section, like kale, collard greens, turnip. Lean meats like turkey breasts, uh, <laughs> chicken breasts, maybe some starch like uh, sweet potatoes, possibility. Okay, I'm Carol Ramsey, the food service manager for South Shore. Only thing I would uh, like to add, when you all have opinion on different items here, come to me or just write down to Nutrition Support Department and see what they uh, might figure out of what you all can have on a daily basis. Uh, voice your opinion and okay, maybe it can you. happen, okay? Thank you so much. All right, you're more than welcome.
Hi, my name is Trinity and I'm going to be interviewing you for the Inside Scoop of Sasha International. Can you please state your name? Um, my name is Oluwa Um, How was your day? My day was horrible. What really bad. Horrible. I left my AirPods in the bathroom and I can't find them. And I bought them myself. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, how does it feel when you come to the school? Well, I come here at 5 because I have drill practice, so feeling very irritated and annoyed because I wake up so early to come here. Do you ever feel overwhelmed over homework? Yes, especially when it's not required, especially when the teachers just give out work because they want to put something in gradebook, and then they never put it in gradebook, and then I have a seat, and then my parents come up here, and then they're making a scene for no reason. They're not even in class with me. Was it ever a time where you just wanted to give up? Because yes. You're just so overwhelmed. I gave up many times, but like I'm not 16 yet, so I can't drop out. So I just gotta be here, and I gotta do it, and I, you know, have support from my teachers and friends, and I know I'm gonna get through it. So. Um, do you feel that teachers are inconsiderate for the fact that you have other classes? Yes, but then again. It's their job to make sure I'm receiving all the information I'm supposed to receive, but sometimes I feel like it's overwhelming and they don't give it to me in a way that's very, like, supportive, you know? I just feel like sometimes they just dump work on us just because they need to get past this unit. Um, was there ever a time where you felt like you were just so depressed and down because school is just, just not you, you know? Like, yeah, that happened to me freshman year. Like, I wasn't here. I was at the hospital because, like, this school was really getting to me, like, at a point where I didn't know where I was. So, yeah. Hey, thank you for participating in our interview, and I hope you have a better day than thank you did you. today. Hi, my name is Trinity, and I will be interviewing you today for the South Shore International Inside Scoop. Can you please state your name? My name is Oluwalo Shete Miyajakaye. How was your day? My day was pretty well. Yeah. What made it well? Um, I seen my friends and I went to track practice. Um, how does it feel when you come to this school? Um, sometimes when I walk into school, I feel depressed. Sometimes I feel happy depending on how my night went. But overall, the school just gives me a mediocre vibe. Do you ever feel overwhelmed over homework? Sometimes I feel overwhelmed with homework because teachers don't understand that we do have homework from other people and when things are due, we're not really doing good mentally. Um, was there ever a time where you just felt depressed and down and you just wanted to give up? Yes, this was two weeks ago. I had a mental breakdown during my third period class because I had gotten in trouble, but then I felt like teachers think that when you call home, it's gonna make things better, but you're also going through things at home. If you are, how does it feel to be a student athlete? Um, being a student athlete is very stressful because you get home late, you have to think about your sport, you have to think about school, but it's just, you have to become a balanced person, but it's hard. When you say balance, what do you mean? Being able to do your schoolwork, balance your social life, balance your own life, take care of your own self mentally, physical, and emotionally, but also be there when people need help. Do you feel that teachers are inconsiderate for the fact that you have other classes and you're a student athlete? Um, no, because they are teachers, that's what they're supposed to do, but they could go less on the homework or due dates, say. Okay, that wraps it up. Thank you for participating in the Inside Scoop interview. Thank you. Irritated. Why do you be so irritated? Because I just don't feel like coming in here and the teachers be irritating me. How was your day, Fatima? Um, how was my day? My day wasn't eventful. It was just like any other day. It was kind of boring. Why? It wasn't eventful. Like what made it? What made your day boring? What made my day boring? Um, because it was just like any other day, like, we, I would go to all my classes, as I should. <laughs> uh, if you are, how does it feel to be a student athlete? Tiring. 
because I do track and like we have track meets like that start at five and then we get home to like 10 and then I'm up late doing homework and I don't wake up early for school so yeah. Do you ever feel that teachers are considerate for the fact that you have other classes? Yes, they are inconsiderate. I think they really have no life because you know we got seven other classes. Why is you doing it for? Um, you are a student athlete, which you are. How does how do you balance practice and games? Actually, I really don't. I just go with the flow, to be honest. Like, if I'm at a track meet and if I got time, I'll do my homework. But then if I don't, I just wait till I get home or I just go straight to sleep and don't do it. When you go straight to sleep, do you ever feel like bad or feel guilty that you didn't do your homework? Yeah, sometimes. But then I just shrug it off. Okay, that concludes our interview. Thank you for participating with us today. You're welcome. First question. How was your day? Um, it was good. You know, the usual. <laughs> How do you feel when you come to school? Mm. To this school, I hate it. I keep telling my mom to homeschool me, but she's not going for another day. So, yeah, I don't like coming to this school, but I like coming to see the people at this school. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by homework? Yes, every day. I feel overwhelmed every day. Like today, I'm overwhelmed. I do my homework every class. Like, Homework. I don't even eat lunch because I'm trying to do my homework. Like I skip classes because I'm trying to do my homework. Like just homework, homework, homework. You are. Uh, it ain't one of no violence. It's like I just do what's there. So. It's never been true, not anywhere at any time, that the value of a soul of a human spirit is dependent on a number on a scale. We are unrepeatable beings of light and space and water who need these physical vehicles to get around. When we start defining ourselves by that which can be measured or weighed, something deep within us rebels. We don't want to eat hot fudge Sundays as much as we want our lives to be hot fudge Sundays. We want to come home to ourselves.
The first question is, do you love yourself? Yes. Because if I don't love myself, no one else will. Good answer. Have you ever had trouble with your body image? Yes. Um, weight up and down. Mm-hmm. Has social media ever affected that? No. Okay. Has your confidence ever wavered as an adult or a teen? No. Why not? Because it's weight. It comes and goes. Hi, can you please state your name and age? Hi, I'm Aaron, and I'm 15. What is your definition of body positivity? Being confident on your shape and how you look and knowing that whatever anyone says to you, like to try to put you down, like it's actually more of a compliment because they wish they had that feature. How do you feel about your body and why? Um, I have insecurities like every other person. Um, it's just day by day. I don't think about like plastic surgery or like some stuff mm-hmm. like that, but I feel like it's stuff that you could do naturally that you can make yourself like better about. What is your definition of body positivity? Body positivity to me is like when somebody is comfortable with their body image. How do you feel about your body? Um, how I feel about my body? I feel like, well, I'm comfortable with my body, but sometimes I think like I could be just a little bit thicker because sometimes I feel too small. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Do you think that you live up to the definition of body positivity? Sometimes, but then again. Sometimes I don't. Why is that? Because, like I said, sometimes I feel too small. And, like, social media portrays that girls, like, sometimes they say they can be slim and tall, and I'm kind of slim and short. And then sometimes they have it, like, girls got to be thicker and all that, and I'm small. What do you think influences people to think negative or positive about their body? Probably like all the social media because everybody on social, you see everybody on social media, you'll see them like, like the perfect body and then you'll see like the like not so perfect body. What do you think influences people to think negative or positive about their bodies? I think it's uh, based on comparison. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't see any other reason that you wouldn't like your body if you like, if you had a shield over your head that you couldn't see that that thing is better or that thing is like worse, then what will be your reason for not liking your body? True. So comparisons kind of kill it. How do you feel today about that experience? I don't care, I'm thicker than a snicker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over now. What do we? Hi. Slate. One, two, three. Slate. Boom to the Yeah, I did it. Popcorn. <laughs> yeah. It's blurry. about myself nothing I'm, I mean I'm not trying to show off to nobody I'm just trying to be me I, probably my weight I'm overweighted I'm anything else uh, that's mostly it well I wouldn't change anything because I like the way I dress I like who I am I mean it's not like who who you are how you dress or how you look is who you are inside you know if if the person don't like you for who you are then I don't know, I like myself the way I am. I wouldn't change nothing. Well, I like to talk about my smile. Well, it represents a lot of things in my personality. It represents the fact that I'm like outgoing, I like to have fun, and I'm very easy to get along with, with certain people, that is. Uh. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, it's basically something I use as a key to meet people because I'm like, like to have fun and I smile a lot. So.
There's a cooperative building right over there, the, the uh, blonde building, that's mm -hmm. my cooperative. And when that cooperative came into existence over 30 years ago, it, was, it really created a legacy. And so the people over there asked the city that they start a garden here because they had tore the building down. So interesting enough, the people of that cooperative came over here and moved all the bricks from that building being torn down and decided to plant. And so they did that for several years. And then people started moving and people weren't interested in the garden anymore. And so what happened was that a young, gifted little boy that went to O'Keefe High School, O'Keefe Grammar School, right down here uh, down the block, he was murdered with a gang-related situation that his mother was involved in. And so his teacher was so devastated that she decided to go out and get funded to restore this garden in his memory. So consequently, uh, Chicago Botanical Gardens and other people came in and invested time and money to create this garden.